Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. I wasn't expecting that. It's great flavor. I told you I was expecting water. <laughs> Woo! Ow! I f- All right, anyway. Children's Church, you're dismissed. All right, John, John, and Julian, Children's Church is dismissed. I saw them coming in, so they went right straight on in there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, praise the Lord. We need any more prayer cloths? I've got, I've got some up here already. Anybody else need a prayer cloth for anything? Praise God. Hallelujah. All righty. Glory to God. Anyone else? Hallelujah. Uh, I'm going to take this coat off. Thank you, Dean. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't care what the devil's going to do. Now, don't forget, December 10th. Everybody say December the 10th is our church Christmas party. Okay? We have it right over in that room over there. Now, listen, folks. Um, there's, a, there's a group in here until 6. We get that starting at 6. The, the place closes at 6. So if nobody else is coming in, we're going to have to kind of spill out into the foyer and stuff. And, and um, you know, I think what we'll probably do is if there's nobody else here, we're just going to maybe set the food up out there. And sit in the other room, you know, just kind of have it. But we're, we're basically going to have a place for ourselves, so. Isn't God good? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, they could get somebody else in here, and I don't know. That, that's possible. Praise the Lord. All righty. Let's go ahead and get into the Word this morning. We've been talking about the authority of the believer. Talking about how that Jesus came for one reason. Jesus came to get back what man had lost in the Garden of Eden. Now, let me say this. Had Adam and Eve not fallen, Jesus would have never come. Kim, Jesus would have never had to come. Well, he was the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. Yes, he was, because God saw in his foresight and foreknowledge man would fall. But had Jesus not, had Adam and Eve not failed in the guard, Jesus would have never come. It was never in God's intention for man to fail. Guys, go in the children's church, guys. Miss Janie's over there. They're out looking. What? What? Excuse me. I, I, I got to. That's messing with me. Hallelujah. So we talked about, let's, let's go to Matthew 28. We're going to, we're kind of, remember we talked about Jesus came. Jesus came to get back man's authority. So we're going to look at Matthew 28 real quick. Because we want to we move into, Jesus came to get it. He didn't come to get it because for him. Do you understand the purpose of Jesus gaining the authority back from Satan of man was not for Jesus? He didn't need it. Are you here? Satan didn't rule over God. Satan didn't rule over the throne of God. Hallelujah. God still had authority over the devil. He couldn't, he couldn't take over the throne. And at the end of what we, we refer to in, 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 in uh, terminology is this, of Adam's lease, in other words, it appears from Scripture, and we can't prove it. There's no set scripture that says it. But, but it appears from the, the, embody, the entire body of scripture that Adam's time on the earth as the ruler was limited. There was a time frame on it. Remember Satan came. Remember when Jesus came to the devil. And they said, if you come to torment us. Well, when the man possessed with the, the, the legion. When Jesus came to him, he says, hey, if you come to torment us before the time. And so we, we see from that, and we, with, with other scripture and, and, and different things, it, it, if we have the, you can, you can see, and we can't prove it by going there. Here's a definitive scripture that says Adam had a time lease. But there's enough scripture that bears out or, or weight under the weight of it would, would, would infer that Adam's time of ruler or king or, or ruler over the world or God of the world was limited. And that at the end of that time, we don't know what was going to happen, but that was, you know, that, that was, that was, it was limited. So when Satan, had God just Adam sold out and God done nothing at the end of a certain period of time, Satan and all humanity would have just gone to hell and God would have wiped it out and done something different. Aren't you glad he didn't? Aren't you glad that, you know, that he sent the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world? Amen? 
Hallelujah. So we have that, we have that, uh, at least inference in Scripture that that was so. Satan's called the God of this world. Why? Because Adam and Eve sold him their authority in the Garden of Eden. He became the God of this world. He was not the God of this world before. Adam was. Okay? So Jesus came to get back the authority that Satan had over man that kept him bound to Satan's destiny. Satan's destiny for rebelling and trying to overthrow God's throne is eternal death or eternal separation from God, ultimately the lake of fire, which is the second death, okay? That is, that's Satan's destiny. All those who are associated with him go with him. Well, Jesus said in John 8, 44, ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will fulfill. So why did he come? He came to get us out of that place. So that, we could, so that Satan was no longer our daddy. That Satan no longer had the, the, the control over human spirits so that they had to go and, be, and go to the same destiny that Satan had, which was eternal death. Hello. So Jesus came to get that back. All right? We talked about how that he died on the cross. He went to hell. God judged him. He was raised up from the dead. And then we get to Matthew 28, and Jesus says this. In verse 18, Jesus came and spake unto them, that's the disciples, the eleven. Judas is dead. And Judas did not go to heaven. Somebody said, go over that word repentance. You know, he repented himself. It, you know, it was not repentance in the sense of, you know, maybe the same word, but it was used in a different context. I had somebody teach one, came to our church and said it. Everybody, Judas went to heaven. I'm thinking, where did you get that? Word study. I mean, word studies are sorry. You can get off doing a word study if you take it out of context and you take it out of the weight of Scripture and you take it out of everything else. Because, you know, in the, even over in the, I, I, believe, I believe in the book of Acts, they still refer to Satan, I mean, uh, Judas as the son of perdition. They didn't, they didn't ever say he was saved. Hello? Well, thank you. Jesus said all power, again, exousia, authority, is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you, and lo, I'm with you all the way, even unto the end of the world. Let me say something here. I'm going to make, I'm going to make a couple of statements. When you look at the teachings of Jesus, he did not condone sin. As a matter of fact, he told them to teach whatever he taught, to observe everything he taught. Hello? He told them, go and sin no more. He didn't say, because I saved you, you can get away with it. People come up with some of the stupidest narratives, but it sells lots of books and tapes and gets them lots of offerings because people like to be, be made to feel good. We're not, in, listen, can I say this? We are not the happy, clappy gospel. Now, the Word of God will lift you up. And the Word of God will produce joy in you. But the Word of God will disciple you. The Word of God will change you. The Word of God will chip out of, out of your life things that don't need to be there. And you're going to have to encounter upon occasion when you look into the Word of God, when you look into that perfect law of liberty and you see it, there's going to be things to say, you've got to make some adjustments. Not, you're okay, I'm okay, let's sing the Barney song that I love you and you love me. We're a happy family with a great big hug and a kiss from me to you. Won't you say you love me too? Thank you, Cap. Isn't that right, baby Bob? I like this. Has it got any calories? No calories. Oh, <laughs> Glory to God. So Jesus, listen, he said, teach them to observe everything I told you. So there is not a 
get the get away. Grace is not a get away with anything you want to get away with card. Can you say amen? All righty. Hallelujah. Praise be to God forevermore. Now, Jesus said all authority is get where to get it from. Now, remember, he came to get it. Now, he says, after he's been crucified, buried, raised from the dead, he said, I've got it all. Well, he got it from the devil. He came and he got it back. Now, he says, I've got it. I mean, he was singing with Ray Jean and Nancy Arm. I got it. I got it. Ooh. Hallelujah. Something about the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He's got the power. We got the, what was it, a Laverne trip? We got the power. Well, we get so excited about the power, we don't understand what we're talking about sometimes. Jesus came to get back the authority. He gathered that authority, gained that authority, recovered that authority from Satan in his death, burial, resurrection, conquest of the enemy. Okay? And then he turned around. What? He did not get it so he could run up to heaven and sit down with it. Are you here? That was not why he didn't come down here, go beat the devil up, get the authority, and say, well, see you later, guys, and run up to heaven and say, hey, Dad, look what I got. Because it says, all authority in heaven and earth is given unto me, therefore you go. He turned right around and delegated it to the church. Why? Because much of the authority that man exercised or man had was for the earth and not in heaven. God did not call us to rule over the angels in heaven and sit up in heaven and run to heaven. He's running heaven. So Jesus turned around and redelegated it back to the church, although he possesses his ownership of it. He gives us, and as Kenyon says in his book, The Wonderful Name of Jesus, and if you've ever read Brother Hagin's book, The Name of Jesus, you'll see a lot of times there's, there's maybe a page quoted from Kenyon's. Now, some professor at ORU got, went around and started saying Kenneth Hagin plagiarized. And he would take the page out of Hagin's book and then get Kenyon's book and say, this is on page such and such a Hagin's book, and this is such and such a page of Kenyon's book. Except the thing is, he put a disclaimer at the very front of his book and said, I quote heavily from Kenyon. They had written and gotten permission to use many excerpts. And they put it in there, and he was credited with it. It wasn't plagiarism if you credit the person with it. That's dishonest on that professor's part, or Roberts, for doing that. We say he was just slamming Brother Hagin. Just to, just to slam him. If you're crediting the source and giving the source credit for it and telling them where it came from, you're not plagiarizing. And he clearly states, we, we leaned heavily upon that book, The Wonderful Name. And then he encouraged people to buy the book. As a matter of fact, it's one of our textbooks we got at Ramah. We got The Wonderful Name of Jesus, too, back then. Great book. But in Brother Kenyon's book, The Wonderful Name of Jesus, there was a lawyer in his meeting. He was talking along these lines, read that scripture, and he said, did, did Jesus give us power of attorney? And see, that's what Jesus said. We talked about last week. We said this. We're going to tell you how to exercise the authority, right? Well, this is how we exercise the authority. Jesus got it. All authority in heaven and earth is given unto me. Therefore, you go. And in my baptizing them or teaching them in my, uh, to observe all things I say in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, Mark's gospel, he says, you know, go, go forth and in my name cast out devils, raise the dead. You know, I mean, I'm drinking the other thing. He goes on that whole, that whole discourse in Mark. It's the name of Jesus is how we exercise the authority. Now, you don't have the authority to run the devil off without the name. Now, there's, there's a, there's a um, civil rights activist preacher who's gone to churches over the decades and said this, I can tell you about, I can do all things. I can do all things. I can do all things. And I, and I vehemently disagree with that statement. Telling people they can do all things means they can do it in their ability. See, he's partially quoting the scripture. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. See, when you leave out that part, it makes it man-centric instead of God-centric. I can do anything I've set my mind to. Now, see, as a believer, I can do whatever the Lord has for me to do. I can do whatever the Word says I can do. I can do all things through Christ 
Now, it's inter isn't it interesting the, 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 the key gene says, which strengtheneth me instead of who strengtheneth me? Why? Because it's the anointed one and his anointing. It's the anointing of God that empowers us to do all things. If you think you can do it by yourself, honey, you got it. Because there is, there, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. Actually, in the, in the Greek, that's destruction. Or in the original language, that's destruction. There's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is destruction. Seems right to the man. Seems right to me. Looks right. Yeah. Robin, folk. Excuse me. The grape flavor ran out. All right. Hallelujah. I'm just going to tell you ahead of time. I don't like peach flavored anything except peach. Don't be showing up here with no peach stuff. You'll be, you'll see me going. <laughs> peach soda, strawberry soda. I like grape and I like orange. Cherry. Peach. All authority is given to me. Jesus delegated. What did he do? He delegated the use of his authority. Who's got it? Who has the authority? Jesus has it. How do we access it? How do we use it? Through his name. See, this, this is the win-win. Because Jesus possesses it, it can never be lost. Because it's delegated to us in use through his name, we are limited in how we can use it. Now think about it. If man, in a fallen state, were given the authority to do whatever he wanted to do with, with, with authority, uh, what would they do with it? Oh, dear Lord. It's like turning some people loose with the nuclear football. Do you really want Ken Young Jim or whatever his name over in North Korea with the America the nuclear football? There's some nutbags out there. You don't want their finger on any kind of button. You don't even want them on a water cannon button. Because they're crazy. Well, if see, if Jesus just came and got man's authority and just gave it back to him, one, he could turn around and give it back to the devil. Oh, he would never do that. Have you seen the political landscape in this country? And you don't think people would give the devil power? Hello, we got crazies out there. Ab absolutely. Who, who, in, in, in our nation, we can now stand up and say that, the, that partial birth abortion, we want to keep partial birth abortion safe and legal because it's women's medical care. That's evil. So if you don't think the man would have turned the stuff right back over to the devil, you got another thing coming to you. So Jesus, everybody say Jesus, Jesus. got the authority in his conquest. Then he delegated its use in a limited fashion through his name. What do you mean limited fashion? It has to line up with his will. You can't say, I believe I received somebody else's wife. That's right. In the name of Jesus, I received that woman as my wife. She's married. I don't care. I got authority. <coughs> no, your authority is limited. It's limited to God's word, God's will. Therefore, if you go out there and say something stupid, it won't work. And God won't be behind it. God can't be accused of injustice. God won't lose it. Jesus won't lose it. And the rest of the body of Christ isn't left out to hang to dry because you were stupid. So it is a limited delegation of the authority that, see, that, that's why we got to go to the Word. Brother Hagin says, I'll always find Scripture for what you're standing on. Always find Scripture for what you're standing on. We got Christians, right now listen, I, I came out of the crazy-matic move. Some people call it the charismatic move. It was the crazy-matic move. Ask Brother Bill. He was, chief of the, he was chief of the apostles. 
There was a day, Brother Bill, I know. Come on now. Yep. Yeah, we got better. We grew up some. I, was, I may have been second to chief of the apostles of the crazy matic move. We, were, we just, you know, we, we say all kinds of stuff. Oh, in the name of Jesus, you know, we ain't never going to have any trouble with the devil. Somebody came to Brother Hagin one time and said, Brother Hagin, I want you to pray for me. He said, what do you want me to pray for you about? Do I have to tell you? Yeah. I ain't going to agree with you if you don't. Well, I'm praying that the devil, I won't have any more trouble with the devil. He said, you want me to pray for you that you die? Because the only way you're not going to have trouble with the devil in this life is you die. You got Christians running around. We cast the devil out of this. We cast it out of that. I mean, they cast it out of the cars. They cast it out of their refrigerators. I mean, people were sitting out in the mills and cast the calories out of the food. <laughs> yeah, people, listen, they're just people having sex and getting pregnant and then wondering why they got pregnant. Why? Because they bound the fact they would get pregnant in Jesus' name. They weren't going to get pregnant in Jesus' name. Really? Did not the scripture say be fruitful and multiply? When you engage in the activity that causes multiplication, you're going to multiply. Hello. Sat down with a pastor and said, actually Fred Price, sat down and said, we don't understand it. He said, what? Well, we're pregnant. Glory to God. No, you don't understand. We, 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 we said in Jesus' name, we won't get pregnant. He said, you do anything not to get pregnant? He said, no. You said, you're doing stuff that could get you pregnant? Yeah. Had somebody come in his office excessively overweight and said, I don't understand it, Brother Price. I said, what are you talking about? He said, said, you know, I'm gaining weight. Well, how much do you eat? Well, I eat all I want to eat. He said, but I cast the calories out in Jesus' name. Yet yeah, the scripture says, if a man be a glutton, put a knife to his throat. That went over big. Can somebody say amen? Put a knife to oh, Excuse me. I'm halfway done with this. Ha. Ah. Glory to God. So Jesus came and he got that authority. He limited it. So we, we can't be silly with it. Uh, we, we've done some of the dumbest things in the body of Christ in the past 30 years during the crazy charismatic move. We brought a lot of reproach on ourselves from outside and deserved reproach. Come on now. We've got to be honest with ourselves. Flying around in helicopters, fighting the demon spirits. Renting the top floor of the highest building in town to go fight the demon spirits. Showing up to church and army for teeth because we're the army of the Lord. We're going to do spiritual warfare with the devil. Screaming at the devil till you can't talk in tongues. Now I'm going to say something. There is no biblical support for warring tongues. <laughs> Sitting there and screaming at the devil in tongues until you can't talk, there's no biblical evidence of that ever happening. Now let me say this. Do you believe that God could have moved in somebody in, in a certain instance? Yeah, there are some things that, that you experience with God that you can't teach others to do. It was, an, it was an experience. It's, it, was a, it was sovereign at the God at that moment for that time. You can't go around and start teaching everybody else to do it. A lot of the intercession got off because people started teaching their experience instead of the word. They would go, they'd go and have intercession. They'd get all off. And they, they, they would have genuine places with God. Then they'd go try to teach other people about it. You can't do that. I said, you can't do that. The Spirit himself helpeth us. If he leads you to pray in a certain way, that's the leading of the Spirit. You can't, you can teach people that you'd be led by the Spirit. You teach people to be followed of the Holy Ghost. We're to teach people that, that God speaks to us and God ministers. But we cannot teach people our experiences as, as, as doctrine. And we've done it. And we people think we're crazy. Warring tongue conferences. That was back in the 90s. Helicopters back in the 90s. You know why they got in the high scrape, skyscraper stuff? Because they had to get up with the demon spirits were in fighting. Poor Jesus. He had to stay in here and do it. He's down on the planet, actually standing on the earth, having to fight the devils down here. 
The only time he went up to a high place, Satan took him up to a high place to show him something. Amen? No, we stay with the Word. Now, that means we have limited... You say, well, how would you get off all that? See, when we start talking about authority, people get all excited and they start call, saying all kinds of stuff. We start saying stupid stuff. I believe I got a Maserati. You can't even put gas in the bicycle you got. You know the moped? It gets 80 miles to the gallon. But you got pedals on it just in case you run out of gas so you can pedal it. You can't even keep gas in that thing and you believe you I believe I receive a Maserati. I claim it in the name of Jesus. I declare it's mine. See, it sounds spiritual. Where's your basis of faith? Where's your authority to start claiming something that the Bible doesn't necessarily promise you that? God says he'll prosper you. He didn't say he'll give you a Maserati. We have to get back to being balanced. In the, now, not compromised, but balanced. Now, as you grow, um, uh, the great English preacher, who had the uh, orphanage. Mueller, George Mueller, had the orphanage in England. When he started the orphanage, he couldn't hardly, he currently couldn't hardly keep five orphans in there and feed them and clothe them. 25 years later, he said, I can believe God today for $1 million as easy as I could $10 25 years ago. See, we grow in things. And we grow in our understanding of our authority. Now, the authority's there. But you ha see, we've got to stay with the Word. What the Word promises and where the Word directs us, we can, we can function there. And we need, to, we need to get... That's why we need to be good students of the Word. Can you say amen? We need to be good students of the Word so that we know what the Word promises us, what the Word declares unto us. Amen. So that when we begin to exercise our authority, we have great confidence. When you know what you have, when you know it belongs to you. Now, Brother Hagin has that little mini book called In Him. How many have that book In Him? A little blue, little blue mini book. Are there any? There's like one out there. There's one out there on the table. Drop 75 cents off and you're the first one that you get it. If you don't have that book, you need that book. Because it tells, it has all the scriptures of in him, in whom, uh, because, of, uh, because of him, uh, what we are in Christ, what we have in Christ. It's, it's all of them in there. And then it has like 150, 158 scriptures along those lines. It just has the references. You can go back there and look them all up in your Bible. When you know what you possess as a believer, it's better, it's easy to exercise your authority. When you know your rights as an American citizen. Now, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I think the stupid Miranda law is the dumbest thing that some liberal court ever passed. If you're a citizen of this country, you ought to know what your rights are. And you get arrested, and they got to stop and tell you what your rights are. You're a citizen. You should know what they are. During the interrogation. But they got, now they've gotten so stupid where they, they arrest them and they tell them right out the gate because some court will, did you Mirandize them? All right. We shouldn't ever have to tell any citizen what their rights are at any point in time. That's your obligation as a citizen to know it. Huh? Yes, we'll be teaching in schools that they don't. They're teaching that, you know, if you feel like being a girl today, you could be a girl. That's what we teach in our schools now. Anyway, when we know our rights as a believer, well, how am I going to find out? When you find out who you are, what you have, what belongs to you in Christ, you can exercise your authority to act on it. You can use the name of Jesus to go possess it. When you find out that Satan is a defeated foe from the Scripture, amen, that we technically are the occupying army. How many of you have ever heard, you know, I remember when I was over visiting, uh, well, we were preaching in Germany with John Grunewald, um, over in the, the demonic Germany back in the early 90s, and uh, people say to them, say, well, you need to be at such and such. We're their guest here. 
talking about our military there, our military base. He says, no, you don't understand. We're not their guest. We're an occupying army. Why? Why? What do you mean we're an occupying army? Germany started two world wars. And so after the second one, we stayed. You're not doing it again. Bad boy, bad Germans. <laughs> Naughty Germans. No, no, no. You're not doing it again. We are not, we're, we're, we are not their guests. We're an occupying army. Part of the treaty. We're there to make sure they don't do it again. Hello? Just because you know, two times was enough. We don't even do it the third time. You know, one time, shame on you. The second time, shame on me. Third time, the world's in trouble. All right? So we're the occupying army here. And so we have to exercise our authority based on what we understand from Scripture that we know belongs to us, and the only way you're going to find that out. Listen, you can't go get it all from Pastor Red. I can't cover all 158 Scriptures in a timely manner. You're going to have to study the Bible. You're going to have to get into the Word. You're going to have to find out what belongs to you. You're going to have to find out what's yours in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? amen. You're going to have to see these things. And if you don't know if you've got authority in an arena, you need to go find out. Brother Hagin said, the faith begins with a will. And he got this from Bosworth. The faith begins where the will of God's known. Faith begins where the will of God's known. Well, how do you even know what God's will is? From the Lord. And if it's not specific in the Word, you're going to have to pray about it, and it's still going to have to line up with the written Word. Amen. God doesn't even care if you have a good car. It's just foolish to walk out of here. And we walk out and you're out there in something that, that looks like that the moths have eaten the sides off of it. You know, you're from the rust belt. I mean, you know, it's, it's, the side panels are rusted out. Your, your rims are rusted. I mean, you know, the, 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 the uh, convertible top's flapping in the wind. The answer, my friend. Anyway, sorry. Um, <clears throat> You know, you crank it up, and it blows out blue smoke. They hire you to come through the neighborhoods during mosquito season. Okay? How many used to run behind the truck when you were a kid? The mosquito truck, where they blew out the smoke. The, the mosquito, oh, yeah, we run behind it, and right in the middle of all that stuff, we're thinking, we were so stupid. And our parents were just as dumb. They let us do it. They come riding by. We run out there behind you. It was really cool. You didn't get eat with mosquitoes, though. I can tell you that. Oh, my. And then you're going to believe for a Maserati, you can't, you can't even get you something that, that, you know, you can get in and not freeze in the winter and burn up in the summer. And see, this is where we get foolish. And we start confessing things. I, I, I'm going into the hospital. I'm emptying out the hospital. Isn't it funny that Jesus showed up at Solomon's porch where there were five porches full of folks that were all kind of diseases and crippled and all this kind of stuff and only got one guy and walked off and left everybody else there? He didn't empty out the hospital. I said, he didn't empty out the hospital. You're not going to either. I said, you're not going to either. So what, what are we going to do? We're going to get to the Word. We're going to function within the limitations of our authority. See, we, we get so excited. We want to preach sermons that make people, Woo, I got authority. I'm going to run the devil. Mm -hmm. I couldn't hear that, Dean. Yep, from the roof. Going to run the devil off. You're going to do what Jesus didn't do. Have you come to torment us before the time? Bid it allow us to go into the pigs, and he let them go there. They ran off and drowned themselves. They didn't even want the devils. Old pigs had more sense than that guy did. And he said, we'll drown ourselves rather than have this stuff in us. Jesus didn't, didn't send them all to the pit. I've heard people say stupid. I'm going to torment the devil. I'm going to, I'm going to torment the devil. I, I, I spent last night just binding and working on the devil. 
There is scripture about binding the devil and there's scripture about loosing things, but I am telling you, it's not talking about you sitting around binding the devil up and binding all the demons and they can't do anything ever. Jesus said this word, you're going to have tribulation. I ain't never going to have any more tribulation in Jesus' name. Jesus said you would. See? So our authority is not, is not granted to us in full in the sense we can do whatever we want to do. The authority has a limitation to it that's, that coincides with the word. And we function within those parameters through the use of the name of Jesus. Now, when Satan is coming against you, you can bind him from funk that operation and say, in the name of Jesus, I will not let you do this. You're not going to hurt my family. You're not going to do this. I take, them, take your hands off my money. I'm a tither. See, why? Because I'm a tither and I'm a giver. And based on my obedience to the word of God, I have authority to stop you from messing with my money in Jesus' name. You stop. And God command the blessings on my, my, my finances in Jesus' name. You're not, you're not taking my money, devil. Amen? You're not putting that sickness on me. I know you sent it. It tried to come, but I, I will not receive it in the name of Jesus. Why? Because the word of God says, by stripes I'm here. Now, I can exercise my authority based on what the word says. But I just can't run around. And Jesus, ain't nobody in my church going to be sick this whole winter. Well, that's hard for me if you're sitting at home going, watching the, the Zycam commercial, whatever commercial it is, going, honey, goodbye, I'll be the first one to get it. Pastor's over here praying, nobody in the church will get sick. I can't override the fact you just said you're going to be the first one to get it. Hello? Stock up on it. I'll be sicker than the dog this winter. They say it's going to be a bad winter, and I'll always get it and get it worse than anybody else. Then you're going to show up at church and go, Pastor. I actually want you to show up at church. Pastor. Now you want to do that. Pastor ain't being there today. Sicker than a dog. Now you don't even do that. Sorry I missed the last three weeks. Been sick as a dog. <clears throat> and you're going to have me at home praying. In the name of Jesus, I say that Jeff and nobody in this church going to get sick this whole winter. That devil can't come anywhere near this congregation in Jesus' name. That's, what is that? That's just as stupid as in Facebook posts from these big ministries. I declare today that everybody, in, everybody that sees this will have the best day of knowing nobody. No, 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 you can't say that. We're, we're, <laughs> when we send that stuff out all over Facebook, and these things go to thousands of people. You're all going to prosper. You're all going to be millionaires. And everybody goes, eh, yeah. Let me say this. Read your Bible. Almost every word of the Lord had a condition to it. If you will do this, then this will happen. The Lord may say, you know, the, Lord showed, the Lord spoke to me at this point and said, if my people will do this, then I will do this. There's always a, you just can't decree. I decree over everybody on my Facebook friend list, you're, gonna, you're not going to have any trouble. Just sit back and enjoy it, baby. You ain't going to have any trouble. Yeah, type amen and send it to four people. And none of you will have trouble. What are we doing? We're, we're, we, are, we are playing with people and, sh and, and really enjoining them to us as an individual to financially support us instead of teaching them what to do when the battle comes. I don't need you enjoined to me. I need you enjoined to the Lord and to His Word. So that when the battle comes, you know what to do. When the, if, you, if the battle shows, you go, well, sister so-and-so said on Facebook, I ain't going to have no trouble. Woo, I ain't. And, and you, you're going, your feet going to be where your head was two seconds before. And you'll be, going, you'll be texting them going, I, you said that, 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 it happened anyway. <coughs> then they're going to say, you don't have enough faith. No, 
You misled them. What you should have said, the Lord is showing me that if people will take the word of God and put it in their mouth and exercise their authority when the trouble of life comes, they'll win the battles. That's scriptural. We should be training people. I'm talking about all ministries. We all love the catchy sermon titles. I love to preach. And preaching is inspirational. But Paul wrote Timothy, you've got to be apt to teach. Pastors have to teach. <clears throat> I'd rather preach. And if you get me in another church, I'll be preaching. I'll preach here still some. But I mean, when I'm out, out somewhere else, the preach comes. Woo, yeah. But the fact is, we just can't give people little, little zuzus and wham whams. That's what Randy Greer called it. When he was in prison, they called all the contraband zuzus and wham whams. All right? Cigarettes and all the stuff you weren't supposed to have, they called it zuzus and wham whams. We, we want to give the church zuzus and wham whams and not give them sustenance. We want to hand them a wooden, we, we want to put a nuclear fallout sign on the outside of a building and say in case of nuclear attack come in here it's going to be okay and when you find out it's too late because it'll be a split second of being cooked remember but everybody felt better if I go down to the fire station where they got that little symbol up there whoo and the bomb drops and you go whoo but we all felt better. Remember the, remember the, how many of you remember the videos? In case of an atomic bomb, get under your desk. And they put the symbol up. Go to the place where this, where this symbol is. I think there's even a couple of firehouses in Greensboro that still have them on it. What we've done, we've misled people into believing they're okay in the midst of the attack. And we give these false narratives or these, these puffy narratives to people, you know, that I decree you're not going to have any trouble ever again with the devil. We're setting them up for failure. Jesus came to get the authority. He transferred it and, and delegated it in limited fashion to you based on what the Word allows for you to win, to take His name, to speak the Word, to take authority over the devil. And within the confines of the Word, you can't put the devil in the pit. You cannot send the devil to hell. You can't kick him off the planet. He's here until the time. You can't get Jesus back any quicker. I'm believing the Lord's coming back. I decree he's coming back. And my face is out there, brother. I'm telling you. The Father... The son doesn't know, only the father knows. Well, I got faith. No, you're stupid. Go get Fred Price's book, Faith, Foolishness, and Presumption, and read it. And just understand it's talking to you. That'll help you. Just go in knowing he's talking to you. Then when you come out, you might be straightened out. <clears throat> so, Pastor, you're telling us a lot. Of, yeah, yeah. You've got to understand. When we start down these paths, the devil will come and try to push you into crazy. People get all excited and they'll start running around. They'll start binding this and binding that and confessing this and confessing that. And they don't have any more scriptural basis for anything they're saying than a man on the moon. And then they're wondering why it doesn't work and they get all upset because it didn't work. It's not going to work if there's no basis for faith in it. If it's not supported by the Word of God, you're not, you can't exercise authority in it. You can't send the devil to hell. You can't fix it so you'll never see the devil again. There won't ever be a problem in your life again. Jesus called the Apostle Paul as an apostle. Appeared to him on the road to Damascus. And by the Spirit of God, he spoke to him, and he wrote a book to the church at Ephesus that said this, Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. 
You can't confess, bind, declare, use your authority to stop the evil day from coming. But you can put on the armor and win. And when it shows up, the Bible says, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. The old J.B. Phillips translation, before he cleaned it up a little bit, said this. And having done all to stand, remain on the battlefield, ready to do battle again. You hear some people talk, you can just confess that way. Ain't even going, there's not the evil day. Ain't even, I've confessed, and I believe the evil day ain't even coming to my house. You are just being silly. It's coming. And God's already told you what to do. When, you know, he even, Jesus even gave us a parable. The ten virgins. Remember the five virgins who didn't put any oil in the lamps, went and waited for the bridegroom? And then the five virgins who went and got oil and they had extra oil, and when they started around, they filled it back up. And then when the bridegroom showed up, the ones who didn't have it had run out, and they said, give us theirs. They said, no, we can't do that. We won't have enough for us. He was the, the, the five foolish virgins were left out. That's a parable to the church people. We prepare and we walk according to the Word of God. Our authority is exercised in line with the Word of God. Amen? Father, we pray over these prayer cloths. We thank you that the Word of God teaches us that the handkerchiefs and aprons went from Paul's body where you wrought special miracles. And we know that through this ministry that takes place. So we lay hands on them in accordance with the Word of God. We speak life over them. We thank you that the anointing of God is transferable. When it's taken out and laid on the sick bodies of the sick and the infirm, those that are uh, possessed with spirits, those that, are, that have spirits of infirmity, uh, whatever the need is in that realm of physical deliverance, we thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that this goes into their bodies. It's released into them, and they're made every whit whole and set free in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it, and we give you glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.